Okay, hopefully I can do this uh, with the wind that we have today. Um, I'm going to go over a few things on how to choose the shoes that you harvest. These are all uh, natural shoots with the bark still on. Now the way I choose these shoots is, um, of course I look for straight shoots. Now these two look pretty straight. And these two are not as straight. So which ones do you think would be the hardest to make arrows out of? Well, this one right here is the hardest one. Because it has, it's basically straight, but it has these little zigzags in it that are very difficult to remove because they're tight bends. This one here, even though it's got more bend to it, is probably the easiest one to use because all the bends are gradual and gentle. There's no sharp zigzags in it. Now this one has a couple of kinks in it, but it, they're not they're not very sharp, it's, they're kind of gradual. Whereas this one here, I don't know if you can see, these zigzags will drive you nuts because they're tight. And to try to bend it there without causing any cracking is going to be tough. You may have to steam it. I'm not saying it can't be done, but it's going to be more difficult than something with uh, more gentle bends to it, like this. Now some shoots will be so straight that I don't think anyone out there would have trouble making an arrow from this one, let's say. That's just a natural right off the, uh, right off the tree, or the bush. So uh, I'm going to try to straighten these. Now this one is really bad down here. You might not be able to straighten that area right there, but this one I can probably straighten. And these are fully seasoned. These have been sitting here for at least six months, fully dry. They're not green at all. And uh, I'm going to do it the e easiest way I know how. That's with a heat gun. A heat gun and a pair of gloves. I'm going to zoom in here. Now wood is uh, what they call thermoplastic, which means if you heat it up, it becomes flexible. Uh, dry wood, uh, you should be using dry heat uh, to bend it. Now you can put it in a steamer and try to get the bends out that way by using steam. But if, when it dries out again for the second time, you might develop cracks on the surface. Uh, if you're using green wood, steam works very well to straighten these. And I'm just going to straighten these, straighten this one here at first by hand with the gloves. Then I've got two tools down there that I'll use for fine tuning it. But this one's got a gentle bend to it. It's not too bad. A lot of shoots will look like this. So let's see how it works. Uh, I just heat the compression side, which means the side that will be in compression when I bend to straighten it is the side that I'll heat. And the reason for that is if you heat the tension side when you bend it, it tends to crack easily. But if you heat only the compression side, the compression side is becoming more plastic and it will just kind of crush in on itself 
and then when it cools, the tension side is not really affected, but the compression side is, and there's not going to be any cracking, it's just going to be compressed. So I'll just do some preliminary heating and straightening, and then I'll fine tune it with these tools down here. And hopefully this won't take too long. And you can tell when it starts to become uh, flexible just by the feel of it. You don't want to scorch it. A little bit of discoloration is okay, but you don't want to get it black. You don't want it scorched. I applied a little bit too much heat to that, so but it's it's thick there and on the final arrow that most of that will be taken away. bit of discoloration on that. I'm going to zoom out again. How, how do I know when it's hot enough? I really don't. I just have to test it. If it feels flexible, then it's hot enough. I know it's too hot if it gets discolored. And if I heat a larger area, the bend will be more gentle. If I heat a small area, I can make a sharp bend in it. I don't want to make the bends too sharp because it will crack on the tension side. But all I'm doing is heating the compression side and compressing the wood. So I'm not really affecting the, uh, the tension of the wood. tension stresses that is if you put the wood in tension or if you mess with the tension and it flex flexes during shooting or on impact it increases the chances for breaking There's no oil or anything on this, this is just straight straight from the, uh, the seasoning rack or wherever you want to store it. few sharp, relatively sharp bends in it. There's one right here. I'll 
I'll just do a little bit of preliminary straightening on it and then use the tools on it in a minute. We're already at 10 minutes. You can tell I don't hold it too long. You really don't need to sit there and hold it for a whole minute or whatever. When you bend it, as long as you flex it a little bit past where it should go, you don't need to sit there and hold it in place. tool on it now. This area here is hard to grip onto so I can't really bend it with my hands very easily. It's, it's real thick too so I'm going to use this tool to help me bend that hard, hard to bend area. Listen to make sure I don't hear any cracking. If you start to hear cracking, you've, you've already bent it too much. And uh, you may not want to use that chute. Compression side. I've got it a little bit too hot so that it makes the wood harder to compress if it's too hot, if it, if it starts to uh, temper. If it starts to get heat hardened, it won't compress as well. I'm sure all you guys out there wouldn't have a hard time making an arrow out of that. But uh, I'll straighten it some more and uh, go over the sanding and the, uh, spining in another video. Uh, what I mean by spining is just to figure out uh, what poundage of bow it could go with after sanding. Straightening on a seasoned wood shoot.
And this is a Chinese privet. That's it.